compassion is unique and even rare when seen in thought, emotion and action all at once. It is a disposition only a few are blessed with but thousands benefit from it. Dr. Keki Hormuzji Garda, an outstanding chemical engineer, scientist and entrepreneur. Born to the Parsi Dastur family. On 25th September 1929 in Mumbai, he was the seventh and the youngest child born to Hormuzji and Ratanbai. Sadly, only two of his sisters survived. Keki received all the love and affection from his family, especially his mother. Educated up to matriculate, was a voracious reader and instilled a high moral nurture and a strong sense of ethics in her son's early years. My mother used to say to me, and she said it not once, maybe about 20 times as I was growing up. My name is Keki. So Keki, it is your duty to make as much money as you can, honestly. But you have to die poor. Meaning that you have to give it away. It's not yours. You have taken it from society. Honestly, no doubt. But you have to return it to society. Keki moved to Bandra from Gowalia Tank and started his formal education in a Jesuit school, St. Stanislaus. He then joined Elphinstone College and graduated in Chemistry and Physics from the Royal Institute of Science, Mumbai, in the year 1948. He then went on to obtain his B.Sc. Tech degree in Chemical Engineering from the University of Mumbai, Department of Chemical Technology, in 1950. In the lab, he used to run pilot experiments. I have seen him running experiments in a UD City lab because I was doing experiments same time. So I know his skills and I learned from it. From the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, in 1951. I went to the University of Michigan and I passed about, uh, about five years there. I got my master's, I got my PhD, and I think I took a little longer than usual, primarily because I was my, my professor's assistant also. So, whenever he didn't come for some reason or other, I used to give his lectures to the lower classes. And uh, I enjoyed my life and travelled to complete his master's program, followed by a PhD degree in chemical engineering in 1957 from the University of Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma, where he taught process chemistry for two years. But after I had left, some of the students had not yet completed their PhD in organic chemistry or chemistry. And... Uh, one of the students uh, told his professor that I would like to do it this way. He says, no, 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 do it this way. He says that Keki Garda had advised me before he left to do it the way I'm telling you. Ah, if Keki Garda told you, I'll have to think about it. <laughs> that was the type of reputation I had. The professor himself would worry how to contradict me. Tomorrow, I didn't have a degree in chemistry uh, there. Oh, I mean, I'm very good at organic chemistry and industrial chemistry in general. I use chemical engineering to make things happen. During this period, he received a message from his mother about his father's ill health, which brought him back to India. On his arrival and a few days later, 
his father Hormuz ji passed away and his mother requested young Keki to stay back which he could not refuse he soon followed his passion teaching and joined his alma mater UDCT as a visiting faculty while parallelly offering consulting services to the chemical industry the monetary payoffs were meager but with his alma mater UDCT failing to offer him a permanent job his entrepreneurial ambitions started to take shape he started manufacturing various reagents and selling them to colleges around mumbai around this time he met aban mehta a student of sociology at elphinstone college he married this daughter of a professor of french and a doctorate in sociology on 26th january 1962 with his brother in law ratan gawas manik in tow and his mother's support keki decided to go full steam into business and follow an entrepreneurial dream he established gharada chemicals in 1964 finally we gathered together about 2 lakhs of rupees among the family uh, i had brought back about 50000 rupees from america we had an old house here my mother was still alive at that time and she used to keep me and uh, I had no household expenses. She had some uh, independent income from my father, shares and this and that. And I was here, and oh, finally, in uh, 1963, started Garda Chemicals with about two lakhs of capital, forty thousand dollars. Mine, my mother also had some money. She put in thirty thousand. He, another sister put in a little thirty thousand, and my youngest sister had been married for a longer time. Her husband was fairly well off, so he put in a lakh of rupees. So together we managed to scrape up two lakhs of rupees and started Garda Chemicals. In a small shed at a slum at Santa Cruz, Mumbai, the shed housed the research and development laboratory, the manufacturing plant. as well as the administrative office a hut with a leaky roof in a bombay slum that's the beginnings of garda chemicals which today sells more than 500 million dollars of products around the world Six, two thirds of the products are sold outside of india in competition with all of the major chemical companies of the world started from that hut With the leaky roof in a Bombay slum, that's a that's a that's an immense achievement to have done that. So uh, uh, that that's my uh, perspective on uh, the contribution that Kaki Garda has made. So now you have this major company which employs uh, a very large number of people, a uh, large number of plants. Uh, he's very scrupulous about the. Uh, procedures which he uses, uh, uh, he never violates any laws, and he does things that are not even required to be done by law. But he does them because of a very high sense of uh, of morality. To his support were untrained help from the nearby localities of Bandra and Santa Cruz. The Indian textile industry then needed a dye called Talogen Brilliant Blue. a product of buyer it could only be imported and needless to say at a high price dr gharada sensed the need and developed the product in house manufacturing it with superior quality at a much cheaper price known for years as german blue the product eventually came to be called as gharada blue I don't merely order my people what to do. I tell them why I am telling you this. I give them the whole background of my thinking, starting from knowledge from the market. You have to make products which somebody would buy also, isn't it? And also, if not buy, you have to create a market for it. So if it's already there, then its life is a little easier. 
you become the most efficient producer among all the other producers so if the market is there then you want to take out a bit of other people's market see or by making a good product cheaper you want to create a expanded market the market will grow also a good product at a cheaper price the market will grow a small group of inexperienced workmen as a team a true self believer dr gharda led and motivated them and this feat was accomplished during all this while dr gharda continued to visit the library of udct and sit there till late hours to enrich his knowledge which he believed will be the only factor for success apart from courage and luck as a regular visitor to library every day he would come up to 5 o'clock and uh, stay in the library at 8:30 and all the library personnel will wait for him uh, to pack up and he would be the last reader in the library voracious reader with this background dr gharda decided to give an opportunity to the bright talent of udct the students of chemical engineering with a helping hand extended by professor m m sharma he is an unusual combination what i call in uh, english uncanny combination real uncanny combination of a good chemist excellent chemist at that very good chemical engineer very good uh, business sense and excellent at uh, conceiving the design and executing the project and even run it in the beginning he was the sole person under conditions under which he started his company we used to work at night and all that showed his grit so he is an unusual combination and i not encountered any similar person in india in chemical industry i can tell you in 1967 Gharda Chemicals was converted into Gharda Chemicals Private Limited which later on transformed into Gharda Chemicals Limited in 1988 In 1969 Gharda looked around to build his first factory and zeroed in on Dombivli near Mumbai The first move from his uh, you know garage backyard operation to when he had first bought the plot in Dombivli and was planning to put up the factory there and Dombivli was absolutely sort of like a remote farming uh, land with horrible kachcha road <coughs> and uh, three of us in the car it went over a big uh, stone in the road and the oil pan got punctured and that whole story half a day going in trying to deal with the car but i remember dombivli that's the first memory i have that was really <laughs> remote and tough road in 1971 the plant was commissioned to manufacture thalogen brilliant blue and bezodyne hydrochloride the plant then went on to house the departments of research and development design engineering and quality assurance the company then commissioned a state of the art pilot plant facility with equipments capable of investigating the kinetics and thermodynamics of high temperature gas phase reactions dr gharda was elected a fellow of the indian institute of sciences in 1976 in the field of process engineering in 1981 Dr Gharda was invited to the Monopolies and Restrictive Trade Practices Commission as an observer. After hearing the farmers and the multinationals, he stood up and challenged them that he would manufacture the same product with a different and safer process. Gharda ventured into agrochemicals from dye stuff and moved on to manufacture isoproteron wheat herbicide. dyes is not an area by which he will contribute to move into agrochemicals at that time 
I was involved in the government's apex committee to plan agrochemicals for the country for future. So then we discussed and I said you better get into pyrothroids and all. So Gujarat Insecticide was formed in cooperation with Gujarat Agro. It is now wholly owned subsidiary of Garda Chemical. So from Garda's side, KK Garda and myself were on the board of that company. And that board had the managing director of Gujarat Agro plus one more person they would nominate. Whether it's chairman of the Gujarat Agro or managing director, that was their responsibility. So we, Garda named me. So I went for the inauguration. Anglish was quite backward. A lot of farmers came in bullock cart at that time. In 1982, he joined hands with the government of Gujarat to form a joint stock company called Gujarat Insecticides Limited to manufacture synthetic pyrethroids. GIL, a joint sector company started in 1980 by GCL in association with the Gujarat government, which earlier owned Gujarat Agro Industries Corporation Limited, is now a 100% fully owned subsidiary of GCL. Today, GCL is the largest agrochemical manufacturer and exporter in India. As the business started growing, Garada found his next piece of land in Ratnagiri district and started construction in 1988. The plant at Lote Parshuram, which was commissioned in 1989, has facilities for scale-up kinetic study and manufacturing of new products. The Lote unit is the first company worldwide to engage in large-scale production of anilophos, the rice weed side, chloropyrifos, dicamba, and others. Large numbers of scientists are involved in research programs towards the research of polymers and agro products. In 1997, Garda diversified into polymers and started the polymer plant in Panoli, which manufactures specialty polymers like polyether ether ketone and polyether sulfones, two core technologies for the manufacture of polymer solution and emulsion polymerization have been developed by GCL. GCL has been awarded thrice for the technology development of polymers PES and PEEK at this plant to enable it to produce a series of basic polymer resins. He was the only industrialist who was paying 4 to 6 percent of his gross profit distributing to the employees as bonus and that amount was that time as well as even now coming to the highest amount of Diwali bonus in India. Some of the workers were getting, my workers, 70-80 thousand rupees each year as bonus. So that is one significant thing and that is why probably he was always saying that um, I am here to take, look after my workers and I don't want unions. So, I mean both the sides were there and then he is also having a lot of charitable uh, distinct activities because I find him to be simple living and selfless man. I think he has invested almost all his earnings from the factory in the expansion of his factory. And he would run his plant a few months with the machinery arranged this way to make this product and then he would rearrange, I mean the machinery would stay the same but the piping the sequence in which the equipment was used, he would just switch around brilliantly. He was so fast off the ground with anything he wanted to do because of this, because he would think modular. So he wouldn't set up a plant uh, just that it has to do this and then if the you know, market changes or the product changes, what will you do? 
he could really switch around between his uh, uh, his chemical engineering modules within the factory. Well, I think uh, there is only one uh, Dr. K.K. Gada that I have seen in the world. I think he is so unique. Uh, it's uh, absolutely incredible. He is a true innovator. Uh, there is a very good definition of an innovator. Innovator is one who does not know it cannot be done. That fits in perfectly with Dr. Gharda. There is nothing impossible for him. He will create the most audacious dreams and make them happen. Innovator is also one who sees what everybody else sees, but thinks of what nobody else thinks. Dr. K.K. Gharda is exactly that. Despite known steps in a chemical synthesis, many known steps, how creatively you combine them by seeing what the others are not seeing and creating a breakthrough is marvelous at that. That's number one. Garda Chemicals is today a research-based company. Around 100 scientists exclusively working in R&D with all products originating from indigenous research work. With manufacturing units at Dombivli, Lote Parshram in Maharashtra, Panoli, Ankleshwar at Gujarat, and a formulation plant in Samba, Jammu. The doctor's major concept is to uh, reduce waste. I mean, reduce waste means convert um, more of more of a conversion to the product. And second thing, whatever byproduct which you can uh, take out value from this byproduct. To give an example of uh, cuprous chloride, this is one of the catalysts we use in one of the major products. Okay, maybe uh, six, seven years ago, we used to sell this uh, cuprous chloride as a byproduct. So, and doctor, uh, we had a chat with doctor, and doctor said he, uh, this is we, we is possible to recycle this uh, particular cuprous chloride, and give us he, he gave us some uh, certain guidelines. We followed it. We failed once because we tried it, but it was affecting the overall conversion. But we followed it up, and we got a clue, and then we started recycle. And since last seven eight years, we are continuously recycling this catalyst on a hundred percent basis, making a savings of more than eight to ten crores per annum for this product. Because every day is a challenge. Every day we have innovation happening in the plant. That is our product are becoming more competitive and uh, the interaction with the doctor, the motivation he gives in terms of technical inputs, um, like you, you just cannot uh, evaluate in terms of money. GCL has established itself as a major force not only in pesticides but also in the field of polymers, veterinary drugs and other intermediate chemicals. He's an innovator par excellence, he keeps on thinking about uh, new ideas and uh, and he would, uh, every time you talk to him after an interval of six months or eight months, he would actually talk to you about some new ideas and uh, and of course he, he is kind of constantly pursuing old ideas. Uh, towards translation and also refining those ideas towards greater, greater perfection. Dr. Gharda then promoted Gharda Scientific Research Foundation, a non-profit research organization where he started conducting studies on various basic technologies. GSRF is a Section 25 not-for-profit company whose objectives are to do scientific research and development of technology. And further, the more essential part is to implement small to medium-sized plants so that the technologies can and may be licensed or sold to larger business groups, either in the business or may be persuaded to enter the business. He started to study and develop technologies in the field of metallurgy. 
I'm also happy to know about the founder of Dada Scientific Research Foundation, Dr. K. Kaida, who is in front of us, who is a scientist, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and a researcher who has made contribution to the Green Revolution and agriculture industry. He also took interest and started to study the elimination and recycling of various effluents in the erstwhile aluminium process. The processes also focus on energy efficiency in comparison with the present processes. The, in the aluminium industry, uh, there is a solid waste after recovering aluminium and uh, it is called red mud. It looks red and it is, looks like a mud also and therefore it is called red mud. And it has titanium up to 7%, very good quality iron as well as aluminium. And there are more than 3 billions of such mud available in the world. And if we recover titanium from this red mud, only from India if we recover, then the titanium recovered will be sufficient for the entire world for more than 50 years. So his thought process is so much raw material is abundantly available either in the form of sand and the red mud and red mud has been uh, a load on the society. It is a big pollution source. So he wants to convert um, such a pollution source and which is uh, heavy burden on the society in the form of wealth. The unit operations and unit processes are, which are required for converting either red mud or sand uh, into titanium, these are very complex. These happen at very high temperatures. Materials of construction required are uh, exotic. and. Uh, uh, the understanding of those processes and understanding of hydrodynamics within those equipment, it is very difficult and he has been able to do that and uh, his technology will soon see light of the day. Earn a lot, very honestly, live economically and spend generously for the community around especially the underprivileged. Bai Ratan Bai Gharada is the inspiration behind the formation of the Gharada Foundation. What is one thing that started this company? The one thing that started this company is research and knowledge. It is the ability of Dr. Gharada's knowledge and research to implement and employ the technology and create wealth. Now when this wealth does not go into the pocket of the promoter, and it has to be distributed among society whether it is me who is working for him or anybody else would feel fortunate to have been working with him because neither are we talking about substandard goods we are talking about world class products but at the same time we are also trying to serve society The foundation is relentlessly active in helping the needy individuals as also the economically weak educational institutes with donations, food, healthcare and much more. The foundation runs charitable hospitals, one at Dombivli and the other at Lote in Ratnagiri district. But still at the back of the mind, I always used to feel, no, 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 Dr. Garda has something else in mind. And he is just waiting for a person whom he can trust to take over so that he is ready to fund that too. 
So one day when we were discussing, he was suggesting me that Dr. Gorde, let Dr. Gokhale, let us have a good hospital set up at Lote because people need it. At Garda Hospital is very small catering services to say 15-20 people. Let us have a good big hospital. At that time, I just came out my mouth that see Dr. Garda, you are a businessman, you are a scientist, you are an engineer, you are an entrepreneur and world class engineer, world class scientist. The whole world community salutes you as far as this is concerned. So why not to have an engineering college, maybe chemical technology, maybe other disciplines also, so that one day we can dream that yes, every three years, every five years, this college is producing one Dr. Garla, who will have the same philosophy of thinking, who will have the same passion for chemistry, who will be capable of establishing one industry and giving employment to 1000, 2000, 3000 families who will be more self-dependent, reliant, who will dream of making India self-reliant and not only that, he will be also believing in your principles that you do service but you first produce money and use money for research as well as for the contribution to the society. Garda Institute of Technology is an outcome of Dr. Garda's generosity in the field of education establishing an engineering college with an objective of quality education at affordable cost. Located in Lavil, a small village in Ratnagiri. The institute has five disciplines like chemical, mechanical, civil, electronics and telecommunications and computer science. It is approved by AICTE, recognized by DTE and is affiliated to the University of Mumbai. Good morning, Gada. The story started in 1964. with a handful of spirited people. Now, a family of more than 3,000 dedicated individuals with a turnover of 300 million. Including an export of 180 million based purely on indigenous technology developed by Dr. Garra himself. The R&D budget is 3% of the total sales. Dr. Keki Hormuzji Gharda truly is a rare combination of an organic chemist, chemical engineer, entrepreneur, philanthropist and a proud Indian. Dr. Mrs. Aban Gharda functioning silently at the backstage plays a brilliant and indispensable role. Yes, Dr. Mrs. Garda is a very interesting person. She is a highly educated person. She has a PhD from Bombay University in, I think, sociology. And she is of her own choice a housewife. I told her uh, we are for wow, years we have been rich enough to afford a cook or a house, housekeeper or whatever. You should look upon the dignity of labor. Whatever you work, do you, 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 don't, you should not consider it lowering your dignity unless you do something dishonestly. Instinctively, I liked her. I liked her primarily because she, I instinctively felt she is a good person. Mm -hmm. She was quite pretty also. But to me, prettiness is transitory. Someday or other mm -hmm. you'll get old. But goodness generally remains. So, I have always told her that I consider you a good person, a nice person. And to be 
strictly honest, you are in that category a better person than I am. He is a very nice, kind-hearted person. He is very jovial also. He has a joke for everything. Whatever you talk to him about, he will come out with a joke. And he is very caring also. If I, when I was ill for even a couple of days, he took me to a hospital, put me there. I believe that although Bhakti Yoga is prized very highly, I believe that it is selfish. What does it do good for humanity? You have developed a one-to-one -one relationship between yourself and a God, God or a God. Whereas I believe that it is more useful to acquire knowledge and then put it to use. And the obvious term for that is Jnana Yoga to acquire knowledge, not of spiritual matters, of practical matters. And put it to use, and that is Karma Yoga. Varied hues of success and failure, knowledge, karma, devotion, struggle, generosity, leadership, morality, and responsibility color the world. Rarely though, few fortunate souls have all of these hues coloring their lives, persistently and in abundance. These special ones are looked at with a unique sensitivity admiration and amazement as to what super chemical they turn out to be.